This is The Law Show on CL 650. Now back to the show. I'm on the law, yeah. And welcome back to The Law Show on CL650. Joe Murphy QC is a partner at Murphy Batista in downtown Vancouver. When did you start the law firm? When was that started? Uh, We established it, Zach, in January of 1982. And I remember that well because the interest rates then were 18 or 19 oh, percent. Wow. No businesses were starting out. There they were a lot of them closing. So it was, it was a time, as I say, I recall well. Uh, Nerve-wracking. Uh, no, not not really, because I was fairly confident this firm would do well because I already had a lot of clients, and th- that client base was increasing over time. So you had yourself and uh, Joe Batista, and how have you grown? Well, it started out with two lawyers and two secretaries, and we rented two little offices in a, in a bigger office. Um, today we have 20 lawyers. We have about 55 support staff. We're actually in the same place we were in 82, but instead of having two offices and two secretarial bays, we have the whole floor of the building. (laughs) Uh, We also have an office now in Kelowna with three lawyers there. And uh, in January, we're opening up an office in Surrey with two lawyers. So we've gone from very small to much, much, much larger. And you're in the Scotia Tower downtown, right? Yes. Yeah. Very Since 82. Wow, it's a good run. All right, so... Uh, that was formed, your law firm was formed after ICBC came into place because it was the early 70s, wasn't it? 74. Yeah. So tell us about ICBC, the thought process behind it, and how you believe that it's it's good good insurance for us in British Columbia, but how it's changed. Well, Zach, I was in law school in 1974 when ICBC was, was created by the uh, then NDP government, and it was created on the basis that it would operate the insurance, auto insurance industry in the province for everyone. The private companies were essentially told, listen, your business is over. There were a host of private companies. A lot of people thought the government can't set up a crown corporation that's going to know what they're doing. Uh, This is going to be a gong show. This is going to be a disaster. What ICBC wisely did is they hired all the senior claims people from all the companies. Sure that were closing down. They were moving away. So there was this large group of very knowledgeable, competent claims people that ICBC hired. And that was the management team that began, including claim center managers, claim staff. Um, so over time, ICBC, of course, has grown. The, the um, business has grown. And I think today we have the best insurance system in North America. ICBC does a fabulous job of providing a good product at what I consider a fairly reasonable price. They have consistent claim practices. That doesn't mean there aren't cases where uh, either me or some lawyer in my office is having a battle royal with an adjuster over some claim or problem, but it's a great system. So I, I compare it to the private insurance companies we deal with, and we do, based on our clients getting injured outside BC or injured in BC, hit by, say, an Alberta or Washington State driver, it's a much better system. Um, what's happened over time is people... Okay, just before you go on, yeah. Joe, why, uh, why is it better? It's better because the uh, there's consistency in the way claims are handled. The coverage through ICBC, including the optional coverage, has increased. We, we have, Zach, the best insured cars in North America... And it's simply the awareness that people have that we've got this car insurance, we need to buy extra insurance. So if I go to Washington State, the average car is probably insured for $250,000. In BC, the average is about $1.4 million. We're aware of it. Um, we know it's fairly affordable, although I'm not saying it's, it's, it's not a lot of money. Um, so people have become aware of the need for that and the benefit for that. Now, what about uh, other provincially run systems like Saskatchewan? Is theirs as good as ICBC? Is it close? Saskatchewan started out uh, to be like ICBC. It was the SGIO, Saskatchewan Government Insurance Office. But their province decided some years ago to bring in a no-fault system. Mm. So it suddenly became a system like WCB or WorkSafe, where if people were hurt, they were dealt with by a bureaucracy. Um, Zach, I don't meet people that come to me and say, I had a work claim, I got, I got hurt at work, 
and I'm happy by the way I was treated. In fact, it's the opposite. People are not happy about being treated in a, in a bureaucracy where they don't have the chance of saying, okay, if I don't like what you're doing, I can go to an independent person. In, in the current system, it's a judge and say, you decide, you tell everyone what's fair. And that's in a no-fault system, right. you, you're stuck with a bureaucracy. Uh, you have m- many, many uh, fewer rights, and there's no guarantee that that system is going to be fair. And, but this is the most important thing, the premiums in the places that have brought in no-fault aren't any lower because mm-hmm. that's the usual push. Well, let's bring in a system that treats everyone fairly. Let's get rid of the lawyers, get rid of the courts, and we're going to save a lot of money. They haven't saved money. They haven't saved money anywhere in Canada where they brought in either full no fault or partial no fault. Joe Murphy is our guest from Murphy Batista in downtown Vancouver on the Law Show. Ontario, I moved just as No Fault was coming in in the early 90s. I moved here to British Columbia, and I've, I, I have friends and family, and the, and the rates they pay are so much greater than uh, we have here. Now, um, let's get into, so that was the sort of pure vision of what ICBC was, and how has it uh, changed over the years? Well, when it was set up, Zach, it was based on the premise that it would operate operate at a break-even basis. They didn't want this Crown Corporation to make a profit, but in the insurance industry, you're always trying to estimate what what the amount of the premium should be because that money is needed for years to pay the claim arising out of that policy period. So there's always been a need to guess. In the insurance business, you have to set aside reserves. You have to put aside money that's going to be enough to pay the claims that are on the books. So I see, and, and ICBC was going to be transparent. They, they put out an annual report, and you can see what money came in and what money went out. And they actually publish a list of people they pay money to. So if they pay money to a body shop, you can see that amount. If they pay it to a doctor, to a private investigator, to a physio clinic, to a, um, any so, kind of supplier, you see that. So, it, so you see the, the claims that they pay to your office? No, we're no. not classified as, as a payee. They, mm-hmm. they pay money to our clients through our office, right. but that, that amount isn't uh, uh, released. It's what they pay to everyone else, what they pay to law firms, what they pay for advertising, um, all of those things. So it was designed to operate on a break-even basis, and it was designed to be transparent. What's unfortunately happened over many, many, many years is that the government has begun, has not even begun, the government has the ability to influence or pressure ICBC dealing with rate increases. So if ICBC one year said, we think based on our costs, we need to raise the rates 2 or 3%, the government has the ability to pressure them not to do that. I seem to remember in the 90s, there was, uh, that's really when it seemed to change when there was, I remember there was rebate checks came back and there was a whole bunch of uh, uh, sort of political gaming going on that the, the government of the day was using ICBC kind of like a, like, a, like a piggy bank. They could raid and grab the money and put it into general coffers. That was happening too, right? Well, yeah, what's happened, and this, this is the, over the last maybe decade or so, is the government has gone to ICBC um, and said, you have some profit there. We want you to pay it to us to go into general revenue. Now, Zach, general revenue pays for our social services. It pays for education. It pays for hospital. So I, I'm not for a moment criticizing that these monies were used for that. Well, there's also but can they be wasted. Intent to be. Yeah, they but were, we also know there's a lot of waste in I know, government. I know. And if they kept it in, in the insurance world, then they could just reduce rates which is the way that was the sort of the policy and the premise that ICBC was established on. Since 2012, Zach, the government has taken approximately a billion dollars from ICBC. And that money uh, should have, I think, been applied to the claims and it should have meant that our premium increases either don't happen or are less. But instead, the government has had the ability to draw out since 2012 that billion dollars. Now now the government comes along and says, well, you know, ICBC's losing money, so we're looking at a big premium increase. So that's just a, f- a form of tax. If, you're, if, you're, if you've taken a billion dollars out and then now you're looking for a, a rate increase, 
Well, if you had just left the billion dollars in, in ICBC, we might not have had any increases at all. Well, it, exactly. But but if you go behind the increase, I, ICBC sells two kinds of insurance mm -hmm. on a car. They sell the basic insurance, which is $200,000 liability. And then for most people, they sell them the extra coverage, the optional coverage, collision coverage, comprehensive coverage, uh, loss of use coverage. And what I what's happened is on the basic coverage, ICBC isn't charging enough. But on the optional coverage, they're making a pretty significant profit. And what the government's saying is, well, we don't want to see that profit go to pay the area of coverage that's losing. Um, we think there should be an increase in the basic coverage, but the government says we're trying to keep it down to 4.9%. Whereas ICBC is saying, well, the amount we would need is 15%. Hmm. But it, it's like a restaurant, Zach, that is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. They lose money on breakfast. They break even at lunch. They make money at dinner. How can the restaurant say, well, don't expect me to use the profits from dinner to cover our operating costs for breakfast? It, it's just crazy. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any sense. It should just be one pool of money, right? It, it's a business that's operated and it provides various insurance coverages and why should they identify dollar profit and say well that has to be allocated to this um it it, it shows you that the rates that icbc charges on the additional coverage which usually is matched by the private industry rates has a, an amount of profit in it so rather than that being drawn out by the government why not use that to keep our rates stable um, unfortunately, the government has the ability to influence ICBC. It has the ability to draw the money out. Um, and we've now reached a stage, I think, where there's a bit of a crunch because the basic insurance coverage rates need to be bumped up. And the government doesn't want to see that, especially on the eve of an election. That's Joe Murphy, QC from Murphy Batista in downtown Vancouver. When we come back, we're going to get into what the specifics are around uh, rate increases in ICBC on The Law Show here on CL650. There's more of the show still ahead. This is The Law Show on CL650.